Good evening, friends. Can you hear me? Am I audible to you? Good evening, friends. Am I audible to you? Can you hear me? Yes. Can I order you? Okay, so shall we start? Yes, thank you, Vardhan. Thank you, Krishna. Priya, thank you, Hazan Mubarak. Thank you, Saram Shagarwal, Rashmi Sharma, Satyashri, Deepanj Nahya, Purni Kanak Sabhapati, Rashmi Sharma, all of you. Thank you so much for joining us today. Okay, uh, this is Target INICT. It's a menti based quiz. So I would say you can use this code. Let me tell you this. Just give me a minute. Okay, so please go to minty.com and use the code 8514661. Go to menti.com. Go to menti.com. My sincere request, please go to menti.com and use code 8514661 to join the quiz. I'll wait for you. Please join. So that all will be able to play us. SAP support. My name is Dr. Minakshi Sundaram. Please visit Menti. Menti dot com and use code eight five one four double six one okay so are you ready people as we wait for the other people to join, let me tell you the basic things that are to be told on the PLUS classes. So, I am Dr. Minakshi Sundaram with an experience of 11 years in teaching, MBBS, MDMS, DMMCA students and aspirants. I teach biochemistry and microbiology and I have been the best teacher awardee for the year 2017 and I have sent successfully every year at least two or three students in the top 10 for PJ Chandigarh, JIPMA, Ames and various government medical colleges for the past 11 years and I have been a quiz master and also I have been a trainer. Okay, there is something called as plus subscription in an academy and you could subscribe for an academy to have daily live classes, structured courses, live tests and quizzes and unlimited access to all the classes. There is something called as iconic subscription where the live classes of an academy are making a bond with that of the best of prep ladder. So you'll be having live classes and recorded session of prep ladder coming together as an iconic subscription. And for getting a discount, you can use the code Dr. ASM or Dr. ASM hyphen YT. And uh, there is instruction for me to tell you about this part. Please remember, you can target either 2021 NEET or if you're targeting 2022 NEET, you can join for free live tests on an academy. You don't have to be a subscriber. You can just join the free live classes at 8 p.m. There is free live tests at 8 p.m. for target 2021 and uh, target 2022 people. You can join the live quiz at 9 p.m. And this is how you can go for subscription. We have free live class on an academy on 21st. Please mark my words. On 21st, you will be getting my classes from INICT discussion that is we'll be having the question paper of INICT on 20th of November that is on Friday we have the INICT exam for this year this is there's no more PJ Chandigarh, Jitmaran, Ames we'll be having a combined central exam test on 20th November on 21st November it will be the discussion of the question paper so please join me on 21st okay I'll tell you the time later for that you can join my telegram group Yes. Hello, Kirtu Manohare. Sorry. 
and uh, you can actually download the unacademy app here and then open it and then go for the subscription you can either go for the plus subscription or you can go for iconic subscription and this is the place where you can go for the referral code so you will be getting a 10 percent discount i repeat once again dr asm dr asm YT. This is biochemistry quizathon. Okay, so this is the referral code, and this is where you can actually connect with me on an academy. And uh, all the live classes, the free classes, I'll be posting on Telegram group here, and you can join me on Instagram using Win Emperor. So if you're ready, shall we start the quiz contest right now? Yes, Rashmi Sharma. Hi, Fast Medico. Hi, Kirti Manoharan. So shall we start? Please put a thumbs up if you're ready. Yes, please put a thumbs up if you're ready. Excellent, all of you. So let's get going into the game. We are starting Menti Quiz Target INICT immediately right now. Okay, join this particular one. Yes, please. Please join. Very well. Amazing. Very well played. Very well played. Okay, look at this. So we are starting the game. Okay, so we have seven questions. Please be concerned about this, people. We have seven questions. At the end of seven questions, we'll see who is coming on the top. And all the questions are standard questions. They are on par with that of INA City exam. Neither very too tough nor very easy. So you can think how you can stand up. So make sure that you will come on the top 10. That is how you will be able to know whether you're doing your best. Okay. Okay. Now let's go for the first question here. Answer fast to get more points. CoA derivative channeling the carbon units into TCA cycle for oxidative carbolism and acting as a precursor for lipid biosynthesis is which one? A combination for both oxidative catabolism and precursor for lipid biosynthesis is which CoA? Is it acetoacetyl CoA, acetyl CoA, HMG CoA, melanyl CoA or propionyl CoA? Which one? Okay, we have 25 seconds more. Think about it. Coenzyme A is the active form of the vitamin called as pantothenic acid. So when you want to understand pantothenic acid to be useful, it is like keeping some kind of fire in the rocket leg. If a rocket is kept in the place, Diwali rocket, it does not fly. But when you give some amount of fire to the rocket, automatically the rocket flies. So that kind of fire is coenzyme A. A fatty acid does not know how to move forward. But if at all you attach CoA to it, it can move forward. So let's see how many of you got it right. Excellent. 26 people out of 70 people have got it right. You've done a very good job, people. So the answer is acetyl CoA. Remember, acetoacetyl CoA is the product of ketone body synthesis and that is also starting with acetyl coa and when you look at hmg coa hmg coa is hydroxymethyl glutyl coa we start with acetyl coa acetyl coa plus acetyl coa can give me acetoacetyl coa acetoacetyl coa plus acetyl coa will give me hmg coa that hmg coa can take into two pathways either it can produce lipid synthesis called as cholesterol or it can actually help in the ketone body synthesis but right now we are focusing on oxidative catabolism what is oxidative catabolism in the tca cycle we'll be using acetyl coa not acetoacetyl coa not hmg coa not melanyl coa not propionyl coa so acetyl coa is the one who is common to both the categories so we'll see who is on top who is on the leaderboard here Shubham Gupta and Chena Ram Ola, I understand, but melanyl CoA is involved only in lipid synthesis. It is not involved in case of beta oxidation of fatty acids. It is not involved, involved in case of your oxidative catabolism. So, Sudarshan has been the fastest. Sara Reese is second, Shreya third. So, we are on a great job. Uh, Nedumaran Rajangam, K. Satyashri, Amy, SS, Simba, KP. You have been on top. Excellent paying people. Very well played. So, Chena Ram Ola, I am really sorry. I have a small suggestion. Can you please use the landscape mode? Because uh, I did not try to do it very small. It was not my intention. I'm really sorry, Chana Ram. I understand how you feel. I really understand how you feel. I'm sorry. In this particular section, there is no other option. I have to use menti.com because I can give you scores based on your accuracy and your timing. But if I have to use it, there is a very small space given in that particular website. That is why I have to do it. So the best option is you can go for the 
you can go for the um, landscape mode in landscape mode it'd be more useful okay i'm so sorry about it please forgive me so let's go for the next question question two let's start are you ready on your mark a tumor cell with the defective receptor mediated activation of pkc so if it's a defect of gpr then which of the following is defective this question is a very condensed form. It takes a lot of thought process to understand it. If you get it wrong, don't worry. But if you get it right, you're absolutely amazing. Okay. A tumor cell has been defined. After experiments, I have understood the tumor cell is defective because of receptor mediated activation of protein kinase C. Now, after analysis, if I understand that the GPCR is the one who is defective, then which of the following G proteins is involved in the whole process? That is the question. I hope you understood the question. See, it's a condensation of a very huge question into a small line. And I have made every single attempt to make sure that all the contents are involved in this question. I'm saying a tumor cell is defective because of receptor mediated activation of PKC. For example, a ligand comes and sits on the receptor and it has to activate the protein kinase C. And if it is happening through GPCR, and if I say GPCR is defective, then among the following, which G protein is involved? That is my question. Okay. So we'll see how many of you got it right. Wow, nice. So 20 people out of 70 have got it right. That's an amazing gameplay, very well played. So let me tell you in short, if you would like it, I'll tell you this. See, we have GS, GI, GQ, G11, G12. We have five different types of G protein. In that, GS is stimulatory, I is inhibitory, and I, the Q and 11 does not have a proper role to be defined. But keep on understanding it. Every single day, new information is flowing into it. Now, let me tell you, if a receptor is coming and sitting on the, I mean, a ligand is coming and sitting on the receptor of GPCR, if GQ is activated, it will go back and knock on the inositol triphosphate or phosphatidyl inositol bisphosphate. Let me repeat. If at all, a ligand comes and sits on the surface receptor called as GPCR, if it is taking its pathway through the GQ protein, not GS, not GI, then the GQ protein will be helpful in the breakdown of phosphatidyl inositol bisphosphate. When that breaks, it becomes IP3 and DAG. Now, that IP3 will go back into the endoplasmic reticulum, which will release calcium. Calcium and DAG will take up the remaining activity. So when a tumor cell is having receptor mediated activation of GPCR going to protein kinase C, ultimately protein kinase C will be activated. So this might be slightly confusing because I am not able to write it and I am not able to show you the picture. Please don't worry. I am sorry about it. So let me repeat once again for your benefit. When the ligand comes and sits, this ligand will act through GPCR. This GPCR will break the phosphatidyl inositol bisphosphate PIP2. It breaks into IP3 and DAG. IP3 goes to endoplasmic reticulum. Now that will release calcium. The calcium and the remaining DAG will activate protein kinase C. So if there is a defect in GPCR, if it is through GQ only, PKC will be affected. That is the reason. Okay. I'm so sorry, Pooja Raikwar. Uh, Pooja Raikwar, you should be able to see G11, G. The, the question is over. So next question, see, it will be more visible. Okay. Please have some patience so that you can see the question better. I'm so sorry for that, Pooja Raikwar. Uh, let me see whether the next question is okay, okay? Just tell me whether the next question options are visible. Nirmaran is on top, Beyonce second, Deepanj third, Sara fourth, DK fifth, Moksharma sixth, Nehavalan seventh, Gayatri eighth, Kalaiwan and ninth, and Sudarshan tenth. Okay, let's go for the next question. We have five more questions, don't worry. Third question on your screen now. Deficiency in which of the following blood coagulation factors could most likely be suspected to in a patient exhibiting a prolonged APTT time, activated prothrombin plastin time. Is it deficiency of factor 7, deficiency of factor 13, deficiency of factor 9, deficiency of protein C, or tissue factor pathway inhibitor TFPI? Is this visible, Pooja Raikwa? Are you able to see the options now, Pooja Raikwa? Okay, excellent. So, 
no Lakshmanan, you came so close. Please understand, this is activated partial thromboplastin time. In case of activated partial thromboplastin time, it is a variant of partial thromboplastin time by addition of activators. So, when you focus on APTT, you are focusing on intrinsic pathway. And in case of intrinsic pathway, you focus on 8, 9, 10, 11 and 12. So, among the given area, you don't have 7, you don't have 13, you don't have protein C, you don't have TFPI. I repeat, 8, 9, 11, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Apart from that, you can also use 5. So, when you go for APTT, you're testing for the integrity of intrinsic pathway proteins and they can start from 5, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 and not 7 or 13. I hope you'll be able to use this in your exam. So, do not make a mistake here. Please use this in your exams. Now, let's go for the leaderboard. Okay, I think Beyonce will be on top right now. Yes, Beyonce is on top. Nedumar in second. Sara third. Moksh Sharma fourth. SS has given the fastest answer of this question. Kalevan in sixth. Sayanthan Basu seventh. Amy eighth. Saran ninth. And Joke Rose tenth. Very well played. Now, let's look at the next question. Fourth question. Let's start now. On your screen now. Which of the following chronic effects of alcohol consumption is irreversible? This is a freebie. So make sure you don't make the mistake here. Activation of triglyceride synthesis, inhibition of fatty acid oxidation, ketoacidosis, lactic acidosis, liver cirrhosis. Which one is irreversible as a chronic effect of alcohol? Do not make a mistake in this question. Do not, please. Please do not make a mistake in this question. Correct, Sayantan Basu. PT is for extrinsic. APTT is for intrinsic. Very well played. Okay, which of the following chronic effects of alcohol consumption is irreversible? I hope all of you can make the right answer here. Puja Raikwar, it is not C, it is E, correct, Daksh Krishnani, Krishnani. See, what is cirrhosis? Cirrhosis is an irreversible destruction of liver material because of which alternative fibrotic material and nodules can be formed and the liver has failed completely because of which the ultimate function called as albumin synthesis also fails. Liver's function can be divided into mesh. M is metabolic. E is excretory, that is excretion of bilirubin or any kind of waste materials. S is synthesis, storage and secretory. H is homeostatic. In that, the last one to be affected will be synthesis of albumin and coagulation factors. Even that will be lost. So the chronic effect of alcohol consumption that is irreversible is liver cirrhosis. You can always reverse ketoacidosis and lactic acidosis by giving or bombarding with bicarbonate and removing the ketone bodies that are formed. Activation of triglyceride synthesis is not a problem at all because of chronic effect. Inhibition of fatty acid oxidation does not happen much because of alcohol consumption. So the best answer is liver cirrhosis. I hope all of you got it right. So let's go for the leaderboard here. Okay, so Beyonce is on top, Sarari is second, Nedumaran third, okay, uh, SS is third, Sayantan Basu fourth, Saranan fifth, Kalaiwan and sixth, Amy seven, Nedumaran eighth, Burning Desire 23 and DK is tenth. So well played, many people who have not been on the top 10 have entered into top 10, some people from the top 10 have gone back down out of the top 10, so make your efforts to be on the top 10 as much as possible. Well played people, well played. So next question, this is the fifth question, we have three more questions to go, we'll see how many of you can make it to the top 10. You all are playing very well and these are all our standard INICT questions and I hope you all are doing a very good job. Are you enjoying these questions, people? I hope you enjoy so that we can come back for more. Compound utilized by a person on a carbohydrate-free diet as a source of carbon atoms for de novo glucose synthesis is which one? Okay, these options are looking very small. Please use your landscape mode. I'll read the answers for you. Palmitate, beta-hydroxybutyrate, glycerol, cholesterol, acetoacetate. Palmitate, beta-hydroxybutyrate, glycerol, cholesterol, acetoacetate. Palmitate, beta-hydroxybutyrate, glycerol, cholesterol, acetoacetate. Among the following, which compound is utilized by a person who is on a carbohydrate-free diet as a source of carbon atoms for de novo glucose synthesis? It means what? He is actually going against the 
normal norms. So he's not using carbohydrates as a source of energy, but his body will start producing glucose. So you'll have gluconeogenesis. If at all, he's a carbohydrate free diet. And what is the most common thing that can go for de novo glucose synthesis or gluconeogenesis? Thank you very much, Sesh Gopalan. Thank you, Rahul Soni. Uh, thank you, all of you. So, yes, the time is up. So, let me tell you, if a person is on carbohydrate-free diet, automatically, your other resources will start mobilizing. So, for gluconeogenesis, what is the definition? Synthesis of glucose from non-carbohydrate precursors is the definition of gluconeogenesis. So, if you want to create glucose, you are generating glucose from non-carbohydrate resources. Here, when you have been starving for a long time, the equivalent of starvation is carbohydrate-free diet. You have to activate your fatty acid metabolism. So, when fatty acid metabolism is happening, that is, beta oxidation of fatty acids have to start. But where does it start ultimately? from the adipose tissue. When the adipose tissue is broken down, you will be breaking the triglycerides into fatty acids and glycerol. Fatty acids will go into beta oxidation of fatty acids, while glycerol will get phosphorylated to become dihydroxyacetone phosphate. From dihydroxyacetone phosphate, you'll be climbing up to synthesize glucose. So glycerol will be the common source. The only reason is that fatty acid breakdown happening through adipose tissue lysis. Adipose tissue lysis leads to breakdown of triglycerides. That is the reason why glycerol becomes free. It is useful for gluconeogenesis. Okay, five questions are over. We have two more questions. Let's see the leaderboard. Beyonce, well played Beyonce and Sarah Rees. Uh, Sarah Rees, please let us know what is your name. We'll be happy to know you. Uh, Beyonce, please let us know what is your name also. Sarah Rees on top. Sayantan, Saran, Burning Desire, Beyonce, DK, SS, Gayatri, Sudarshan, Satyashree. Okay, Burning Desire 23. If you would wish, please let us know your name. Okay. There is no compulsion, but if you tell us, you know, we'll be very happy. Let's go for the sixth question. Question six of seven. The carbohydrate modified molecules that are enriched in the viscous gel that lines the pulmonary airways. Are they N-acetylated glucose glycoproteins? Are they glycose fingolipids? Are they N-linked glycoproteins? Are they O-linked glycoproteins? or O manosphere glycoproteins. Which one are they? This question is an integrated question. This may look like biochemistry, but it can speak about microbiology and molecular biology also. How? For example, you think about the carbohydrate modified molecules. Modified molecules means what? They are not simple carbohydrates. You're creating some kind of changes. When that change happens, the modified compounds will go back and form viscous gels. And that gels will be lying the pulmonary airways. What is the purpose? That will be the mucoid material, which can be more sticky and can start attracting all the dust particles. So that the dust particles will not reach your alveoli. The lining of the pulmonary airways by itself will take up all the dust particles in the bacteria. It is one of the defense mechanism. So on that basis, what kind of modification or what kind of modification molecules are involved? There is a question. And the right answer would be O-linked glycoproteins. Please understand, glycose fingolipids are not involved in the pulmonary airways. Please remember, you might be thinking about diphosphatidylgnosetol or dipometoyl lecithin as surfactant. We are not speaking about them. We are not speaking about lipids as per se. We are focusing on the compounds which will give us the viscous gel. I understand many of you got it wrong. Do not worry about it. Let us try to understand the question once again. We are looking at the carbohydrates. These carbohydrates are modified molecules. What kind of modification is the question? Who the modification is for? The modification is for those compounds who are lining the inner layer of pulmonary airways. Pulmonary airways will have what? Mucoid material. When you have mucoid material, you have to have O-linked glycoproteins that are being formed, which are capable of attracting water. Please remember, for targeting of a protein, for signaling of a protein, and also for accepting water molecule to bulge the size for mucopolysaccharides or glycoprotein in all these areas, you require O-linked glycosidic linkages. And the O-linked glycosidic linkages are impossible for the mucoid material which can attract water as they attract water they can be more and more thicker they can attract your dust particles so that the dust will not go into the body so at the end of six questions we'll see who's on top okay both team make both phase and saranan have given the right answers here so i mean saranan will be on top well played saranan sarari second sayantan basu third burning desire Beyonce, DK, Boti, Macboard Face, SS, Gayatri, Sudarshan. Boti, Macboard Face, nice. I haven't seen your name before. Please let us know who you are if you would wish to. Okay, so this is the last question for the day. We'll see how many of you can answer. At the end of this question, if you have any difficulties or doubts or clarification, please ask me. 
defect in the following protein results in reduced effectiveness of vasodilators within the vasculature that involve the influx of calcium ions. Which of the following protein? That is adenylcyclase, calmodulin, ENOS, cyclic GMP phosphodiesterase, and guanylate cyclase. We are focusing on a drug which can act as an antihypertensive agent. That is the meaning of the question. See, the question sometimes will not be direct. So you have to analyze and think about it. We are looking for a defect in the protein. Among the following protein, which protein's defect can lead to reduced effectiveness of vasodilators within the vasculature that involve the influx of calcium ions? This question can slightly be difficult. But if you catch the point about calcium ions, things become easier. What do you think is the answer, people? Can you type the answers if you can? Of course, you're giving the answers in the Mentimeter quiz, but do you know the answer here? Okay, so 16 people have given the right answer here. Well played, people. Let me tell you this. See, when you focus on the endothelium of the blood vessels and you are looking at the intracellular vasculature, I mean, the vasculature's intracellularity, you are looking at the calcium influx into the cells. When the calcium influx into the cells happen, it is purely because of the ability of binding with the calmodulin molecules. So calmodulin molecules are essential to attract calcium into the intracellular space. When they happen, then automatically blood vessels will dilate because of smooth muscle dilatation. Here the question is, you are looking for a protein. This protein's defect is calmodulin's defect. When there is a calmodulin's defect, then calmodulin cannot bind the calcium because of which influx of calcium is affected. When influx of calcium is affected, vasodilators given by the area will not be able to push the calcium inside. So what is the point here? Normally, calciums are staying outside. But when you give a dilated drug, the drug is capable of pushing the calcium inside. Even though calcium comes inside, it should be held by the calmodulin. Because there is already defective calmodulin, the calcium ions will not be able to come inside. Even if they come, they can't bind to the calmodulin because of which vasodilatory effect of vasodilators is not happening because of which antihypertensive effect of vasodilators is a failure. Did you understand this? If you did not understand, please let me know. I'll explain again. Okay, let me show you the leaderboard here. If you wish to, I'll tell you the I'll give you the explanation if you'd like to. DK is on top. DK is the winner. Sarnan second. Sarari is third. Boti McAfee fourth. Uh, SS fifth. Sayathi Shri sixth. Sayanthan seventh. Simba eighth. Shreya ninth. And Amy tenth. Now, let me give you an explanation here. This should be easy. Look at this. I am saying in the blood vessel wall, you're looking at the endothelium. Now, you should be having a protein called as calmodulin already present inside the cells. Now, when you give a drug which can actually help in the pushing of calcium into the cells, that is, yes, I'm repeating it. Look at this. If this is the cell, in the cell, you'll be having ER. Now, the calcium can come into the cell from outside the cell or they can come freely from this area. When the calcium is supposed to come inside, they will bind with calmodulin. Calcium and calmodulin binding is important for this endothelial blood vessel to go, endothelium of the blood vessel to go for relaxation. So what do you mean? Normally, calcium does not have to go inside when there is no requirement for vasodilatation. Now, if there is a person suffering from high BP, I repeat, when the BP is very high, you need vasodilators to bring down the BP as they act as antihypertensive agents. Now, when I give an antihypertensive agent, the drug's primary function is to push the calcium into the cell where it can bind to calmodulin. But in patients who are having defective calmodulin, I may be trying to push the calcium without being able to bind to calmodulin or calcium itself will not be able to enter inside because of which blood vessels don't dilate because of which the effective drug or the effect of the drug called as vasodilator is a failure. Did you understand this, Krishna Priya? Thank you so much. Happy days. Did you understand this explanation, Krishna Priya?
if you have any other questions please let me know and uh, i want to tell you that if you're going for INICT exams i really wish the best for you all the very best people do not worry about anything if you are scared of the exams there are so many people who are scared of the exams remember INICT is the first of its kind they have combined the concepts of pj chandigarh jipma pondicherry and aims delhi so three major exams are becoming one so you will not have a chance of writing these three exams separately you have only one chance if you have a chance to write it take it as a honor take it as an opportunity and uh, i'm telling you on 21st that is on uh, on 21st november that is 20th november is the exam date 21st november the next day after the exam we'll have the discussion of the question paper in microbiology and biochemistry and it will be on the unacademy app so if you could come there i will help you crack all the questions and the answers i'll tell you the answers first hand and i hope you all will be doing your exams very well okay jersey is asking the role of enos endothelial nitric oxide synthase is the enzyme which will produce nitric oxide now in people who are suffering from hypertension the enos is either not very active if there is a defect in this enzyme or whatever the enzyme's activity is producing as nitric oxide is not enough to create the dilatation are you following this part i repeat if enos is present it can be dilating the blood vessel or helping the constriction of blood vessel depending upon the need so whenever blood vessels have dilated when the bp has to fall your body can generate its own enos activity that enos will help the conversion of arginine into citrulline and nitric oxide so nitric oxide is a dilator of blood vessels nitric oxide acts through cyclic gmp mechanism to go back and relax the blood vessels by relaxing the smooth muscles now when a patient is suffering from hypertension his enos is defective because of which there is no nitric oxide there is no dilatation or his enos is acting it is producing no but the no is not enough to actually cause dilatation so that is why you bring a drug from outside that drug can be a vasodilator that can help in the pushing of calcium into the cell which can bind with calmodulin and can cause relaxation of blood vessel and if at all calmodulin is defective then the drug will not be able to exert its anti hypertensive action did you understand this jersey Thank you, Sir Sugopalan. Yes, I will do more sessions like this. Thanks a lot. Yes, does calcium channel blocker act in this way? Calcium channel blocker will actually block different kind of calcium channels. There will be L-tube channels and T-tube channels, and there are other types of channels, right? They will actually block the calcium from entering into the sarcolemma. Calcium entering into sarcolemma is called as contraction. So when I try to block these kind of tubular channels, then sarcolemma relaxation can help in the anti-hypertensive action. So these two are completely different concepts. okay so let me tell you this all the people who are going for ini cet when you come back from the class when you come back from the exam please tell us the questions after you come back please tell us the questions so when you post the questions i'll find answers for you and i'll give you explanations for you so that you can help for neat exams also so from now onwards all the people who are preparing seriously for neat pg exam please understand every single day is important and take inict exam as just a stepping stone towards neat pg if you think that you are not completely prepared do not worry do not take stress do not take inict to be a very sinking kind of mechanism no if you have not well prepared don't worry go to the exam take the question paper sit seriously take it as a meditation look at all the questions properly answer as much as possible and then come back and remember those questions and try working on those questions because those questions which come on inict will be taken from high yield areas and if you learn everything around these questions then you will be prepared well for the neat pg exam so this is how you can become a better person i hope 21st class when i will tell you on the telegram app so please watch out my telegram app here on telegram channel i'll be telling you at exactly what time i'll place the particular free session you can come and watch me on that particular session and if you have any questions also send in send in your questions to these telegram channel groups so for all the people who have been very patient listening to me thank you so much and for the smaller kind of uh, font size it was not technically my fault but i can tell you i'm sorry in that particular app of menti the smaller size becomes smaller because then i use five options so for the next quiz i'll try to have only four options it can be useful for you So thank you so much and sorry if i have hurt your sentiments or if you have find it if your experience was any way difficult but i hope you all enjoy the class and enjoy the quiz let's come back again with one more quiz till then bye bye good night
Purni wants the glycerol pathway question. Purni, let me tell you, in the glycerol pathway, I just told you that when you are not actually taking a lot of glucose, carbohydrate diet, when you are not taking carbohydrate diet, your lipids will break down. When lipids break down in the adipose tissue, you will be having triacylglycerol breaking down. Triacylglycerol breaks into three fatty acids plus one glycerol. The fatty acids will go into beta oxidation of fatty acids. But one glycerol molecule will get phosphorylated to become dihydroxyacetone phosphate. See, glycerol is a three carbon molecule. Dihydroxyacetone is also a three carbon molecule. But dihydroxyacetone phosphate will be traveling into glucose synthesis. So in our question, when you are having carbohydrate defective diet, you will be using dihydroxyacetone and glycerol as the source of gluconeogenesis. That's all. Did you understand this question? Did you understand the explanation, Purni? I hope you understood the explanation. Thank you very much. Have a good night.